The following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools. Welcome to Meet the Author. I'm your host, Emily Godfrey. Joining me via Zoom today is educator and award-winning author, Ernesto Cisneros. Welcome, Ernesto. Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, also joining us via Zoom are students from Key Middle School. Hello, Patriots. Hello, welcome. Hi. Uh, hi, my name's Mason. Hi. Oh, hold on we'll one second, up. Key. Um, Ernesto is the winner of the Pura Belpri Award for his first middle grade novel titled Efren Divided. This award is presented to a Latino Latina writer and illustrator whose work best portrays, affirms, and celebrates the Latino cultural experience. And his most recent middle grade novel is called Falling Short. Ernesto, congratulations. What a well-deserved honor. And we're so excited to have you with us today. For those who may not have read Ephron Divided, can you give us a brief overview? So sure. So Ephron Divided is a boy about a story about a boy named Ephron Ama, and he's a 12-year-old boy who goes to school with this lingering fear in the back of his mind, and that said one day his undocumented parents uh, might not be, be there. And one day he comes home from school and his wor worst nightmare uh, actually comes comes to fruition when his mom has been deported and he's not taking care. Thank you so much for letting us know a little bit more about the book. I know that our students from Key Middle School have read um, Ephraim Divided and are eagerly awaiting to ask you some questions. So let's turn over to those students. Who has the first question for Mr. Cisnero? Hi, what's your name? Uh, hi, my name is Mason. Hi, what's your hi. question? What made you want to be an author? That's a great question. So growing up, I was always at that student in the back of the classroom, and um, I was always really distracted, and I was always just daydreaming. And I, it's something I've done my entire life, and I didn't realize that I was actually an author uh, from an early age. I was always inventing stories in my mind. If there was a paper clip nearby, I was forming little robots or something. And it wasn't until I became a teacher, though, that I realized I could write these words down um, and make a career out of it as well. But uh, but yeah, that, I've always been writing. I just didn't realize that, you know, uh, daydreaming is part of writing. All right, who has the next question? Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Caitlin and my question is, why did you start writing Ephraim Divided? Ooh, great question. Um, so in two, uh, 2018, the elections were going on. And, uh, and during that time that started about 2016, there was a lot of really hurtful things being said about undocumented families and Latinos in general. And a lot of my students are starting to internalize what they were hearing, uh, including my kids at home, my own children. And I felt that I needed to do something to kind of break the stereotypes and to showcase what you know a, a Latino family is like. Um, I did have students who actually had been separated from family members during 2018. So it was my, my way of offering, if you will, a friend to those kids who were going through something similar. Thank you, that was a fantastic question. All right, Key, who has our next question? Hi, my name is Bethany. Um, you talk a lot about food in the book. Why are food and family so linked for Ephraim? And do you have a favorite food? Yeah, so my favorite food, just like it was in the book, it actually is sulfus. Uh, so my mom, to this day, will show, um, anytime it's our birthdays, we are allowed to choose any dish that we want. And so my brother will probably ask for uh, fancy steaks. Uh, my sister asked for probably pozole. Uh, I asked for sopas. So if it's my birthday, you know we're going to be eating delicious sopas that day. Uh, and, you know, and it's just, I think with food, we all have associations that we make. 
I know that there's probably certain foods that bring back certain smells and memories. And I think that's why I write about food so much because mm. uh, I have so many memories tied to them. Could you tell that's us right. what are what are sopes? Could you tell us? So a sope is basically masa, which is just kind of like flour, but it's made from corn. And it's just like a corn tortilla, except that you make it a little bit thicker and you roll them into a little ball and then you flan them out. And so it just it's a, just a little thicker and it's just like a tostada. So you have beans, you put uh, meat on there, lettuce, tomatoes, sour cream, uh, some green salsa. Uh, it's really, really yummy. If you, um, <laughs> I invite you all, if you ever go to me a, a Mexican crest, uh, restaurant, ask for sopes. And uh, I don't, <clears throat> I really don't think you'll be disappointed. Oh, it sounds delicious. Thank you for that description. Um, who has our next question from Key? Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Kyla in Efren Divided. Were any of your characters inspired by your students? Yes, yes. So you said in Efren Divided? Um, yes, yeah, so I had one student in particular who came after school. He asked me, uh, Mr. C, can I speak to you? And uh, we had a little chat. He told me that his dad, over the weekend, his ice came over to his apartment. Uh, they kicked in the door and that they took his father away. Uh, and so that was always something that I'm like, oh, wow, this is what some of my students are dealing with emotionally. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I addressed those things. Um, also the character of Jennifer, there was a Jennifer who was in a, a situation like that. So yes, I do. Um, I have this sign on, over by my door in my classroom that says, uh, be careful what you say or do, or you could end up in one of my books. Oh, that's and, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> yes, and so like Dos Equis from Falling Short, he is one of my students. Right now he's a college student, uh, but he goes by the name of Dos Equis now because, you know, he his dad heard me call him that one time and he fell in love with the name. And now <laughs> as, a, as a fellow teacher, I can't think of a better threat to keep students in line. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, Key, who has our next question? Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Jasmine. Do many kids in Efren's situation got to see their parents again like he did? So the question is... Um, the question was, do many um, kids in Efren's situation get to see their parents again? So that's, it, it really varies. For example, my, my godson actually was kind of separated from his parents. And so they went back to Mexico. Um, and he decided that he he didn't know Mexico. He's never been. He had never been there. He spoke very little Spanish, and so he tried staying in the U.S. by himself. And you know, as a, I believe he was a eighth grade or ninth grade at the time. And as you can imagine, it's tough living at that age without your parents. And yes, he had us, you know, cousins and uncles and and aunts to help support him, but it wasn't the same. He actually ended up going back to Mexico to be reunited with the family because he just missed them too much. It varies. Uh, the, I do have students that go to Friendship Park, which borders the uh, San Diego and uh, Mexican border, and that's where they go and they see their family members through a, uh, a fence, and they just kind of poke their fingers in through the fence, the little finger hug. All those things are real, uh, so it, it kind of breaks my heart that for many people, that's the only connection, that's the only way they can see their families, person. So we'll take one more question right now from Key. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Um, my name is Alia. Why was Efren so surprised by what he found on his first visit to Mexico? Ooh. Um, so with Mexico, it's um, I've, I used to go to Mexico all the time, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, but it's also a place that has a lot of, um, there's like an underlying sadness that I felt when I would go there sometimes because I would see uh, kids my age, uh, you know, wi uh, wiping down the windshields of the cars uh, or selling things on the line, like running through traffic so they can sell things for, for people to, to help uh, support their families. So there's so much there that is just, it makes you very grateful and appreciative of the life that you have. But it also, I always came home with a sense of guilt and just wondering why do I get these blessings and why do these kids have to live this way and I don't. And uh, and it kind of breaks my heart when when I think about that. The only the only difference between those kids and me at, at that age is that I happen to be born on the other side of a wall. And that's it. And for some reason, that wall defines what kind of life we, we get to have. Uh, so I've always had like a little, um, you know, I, I, I love going over there, but it's it, it's, it breaks my heart, too. 
Well, thank you so much, Key. Those were great questions and very thoughtful. Um, we'll come back a bit later in the show to have some more questions with you. Right now, do you have a question for Ernesto Cisneros? Join our conversation and give us a call. So Ernesto, I read a quote that you gave that said, you hope that Ephraim Divided strikes a chord with any Latinx child who yearns to see themselves represented in books. As an educator and an author, why is representation so important? So growing up, I never saw Latinos uh, represented in a positive light. And coming from a family where we were people of service, um, what I mean by that is that we, you know, my mom worked in a factory 70 hours a week. My dad cut grass for a living. My uncles were mechanics, so they worked in factories. My aunts who worked cleaning uh, hotels. We were all people of service. And so when people would always, teachers and um, other people would, um, in the community would tell us, you can be anything in life. I always thought that those things were for somebody else and not for somebody like myself. Because if you don't see yourself on the page, you, you kind of internalize that and you feel maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't belong on the page. You know, I, I'm not, people don't make movies about people who look like me uh, or speak like me. Uh, maybe it's for a reason. So you start doubting yourself. Uh, so I think it's really important that kids see themselves so they, they see like, no, 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 you can literally be anything you want to do. You just have to work hard at it. Well, thank you so much for writing these books, because as a librarian, you're right, it's so nice to have them on our shelves. Thank you. And I tell my students not to judge a book by its cover, but the <laughs> cover for Ephraim Divided caught my eye because of its design. So who came up with the idea for the cover? I wish I could go ahead and uh, take credit, but that's the, the brilliance of uh, Jay Benton, but, um, B E N D T. Um, and she came up with that. When I saw that design, I was floored. Uh, at home, I always keep a copy, and I used to have one right here in my desk at school too. And I keep a copy upside down because I know that sometimes we have a tendency to judge people. You know, we, we make, yeah, exactly. So, um, but if you take the time, it, it's a good reminder that if you take the time to get to know people, um, sometimes there's things going on in their lives that kind of determines how, why they are the way they are. And, um, and it's just a nice little reminder to always kind of get to know people because it's it's a lot easier to dislike people when you don't know them. When you really, really get to know somebody well, it's really hard to dislike them. That's just from my, what I found out from my experience. That's a, that, that is a great point. So we're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll continue our conversation with author Nesto Cisneros. Up next, middle school student Cecia shares her thoughts about Ephron Divided. Let's listen to what she has to say. I thought it was a very interesting book. I like felt bad for like Efren because of how his like family was like divided and different. His mother was like far away from him. He felt alone. During the book, he actually did seem like he was brave and all, and I thought I actually liked that. I think he was like a pretty like cool character. Well, in my opinion, I would like the ending to be a bit more different. I want to see what happens next and if it still continues. I feel like the author left it like that because he wanted to make us like think, like theories and things like think of what you think might happen next. And I, I think that like's pretty cool. I like books like that. It's pretty nice. It gets me like thinking and stuff like that. So I can't think of a higher compliment from a middle school student than, I think this author made me think. <laughs> yes, yes, that, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. That was, that just made my day. Well, we have some more students, uh, student questions. So let's go back to Key Middle School. Hi, what is your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Mio. Why did Efren put so much pressure on himself? Oh, why did he put so much pressure on himself? Great question. I think part of the reason he put so much pressure on himself is because he, he sees the, the parents, they do the same thing, 
he sees a, a ma working 70 hours in a factory. That's something that I, I saw my mom do. Um, my dad would leave, you know, leave to work 3.30, 4 in the morning, and I'd try to get up really early and surprise him. And he'd always be gone by the time I got up. So when you see your parents working that hard, uh, for example, when I was in college and there was days that I knew I was going to have to stay up really, really late to get all my homework done and all my projects and, and everything, and I was exhausted, I'm thinking, I think I just want to go, I want to go to bed and I just want to forget about this. I'm not going to do it. I don't have the energy. And then I would just think about all the struggles and sacrifices my parents have made. And that got me going. And I think that Efren is probably um, doing exactly the same thing. I think he, he can't help but uh, work as hard as his parents have modeled for him over the years. Good, good question. All right, who has the next question? Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Uh, hi, my name is Jefferson. Uh, my question is, why did you decide to end the story the way you did? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you, excellent question. Um, so the reason I left it open-minded, open-ended, is because one, I wanted to make sure it was, it was a gratifying ending, but I also knew that there's lots of kids like Efren right now who are going through the same kind of struggles. And I, it didn't seem fair to me that there'd be a student reading the book and they would see Efren be reunited with his mom. And then they would be wondering, well, when is this gonna happen to me? And, uh, and I kind of feel like it's up to society to decide if Efren is going to be reunited with his mom. And yeah. I want the real Efren's in the world to be reunited first before I, put, I give that to the character. So my goal is that someday I can write a part two. And my goal is that, my dream, is that Efren is reunited with his mom. Uh, but I can't do that until kids like him are being reunited for, you know, in real life first. Good question. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? My name is William. We love, um, my question is we love Efren's Divide and we really love to read a sequel. Have you considered writing one? Yes, yes. Um, again, I, I love the characters in this and I can't wait to revisit them. Um, if, if there is going, to, I mean, I know there is going to be a sequel at some point. Um, a lot of uh, students have recommended that I tell it through Mia and Max's point of view. Oh, fun. I've had, I've had people telling me that they would like to hear Lalo's story uh, through his perspective too, and maybe with the relationship of his daughter. Um, there's lots of possibilities. Um, but right now I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see what the government does and how what's, what's happening with real life families like those of Efren uh, before I can tell that story. I want to see how the, how the world really does react first. But, uh, but yeah, no, I definitely, I want to, I, I, I miss the characters, believe it or not, every character there is just like a real human, uh, human being to me. So I missed my time with them. Well, we have one more question right now from Key Middle School. Hi, what's your name and what's your question? Hi, my name is Jamie. What was the hardest part, um, of, what was the hardest part of writing A Friend Divided? And was it easier to write your book I mean, was it easier to write your second book? <laughs> oh, great question. Okay. Yes, yes. So the, the, the most difficult part with Efren is that I wrote Efren Divided, I think, in about six months, which considering that, you know, I teach and, and uh, you know, I don't have too much free time, that's really, really quick, quick for me. Um, I think that the reason why that book was difficult for me, though, was because I was very emotionally attached one, I was being bombarded with really negative things about Latinos in the in the media. Uh, two, my students in my classroom, my own kids were being impacted by this. Um, and also the characters were all kind of based on family members. Um, I never dreamed that the world would purchase this book, like there was any demand for a Latino story like this. Well, um, I actually apologized to my agent after I wrote it. I wrote it because I thought my students needed it. So I was going to print it out and share it with my students. I never expected it to be published uh, because it was at the time, it seemed like the world didn't want to hear about immigrant families. And uh, my students fell in love with it. And they're the ones that recommended I send it in. And uh, sure enough, after we submitted two weeks later, we had an offer from HarperCollins, like the second biggest publisher in the world. Um, so it was just, I, I it was very unexpected, uh, but again, it, it was difficult to write because, for example, I'm kind of 
as an author, you kind of torture your characters, you make things difficult for them. And here I am making things difficult for people that I knew. And that was really emotional. So anytime that the mom struggled, uh, I, I was writing in tears because I'm like, oh, I just want them reunited. I want to make it happy, but it had to be real. That was my, uh, the one condition, uh, I was my one rule I couldn't break. And uh, as far as the second question, there was a second question to that? I think he asked if it was easier to write the second book once you had one under your belt. Um, it was and it wasn't because now my life had been changed because now I'm under contract and writing under contract when you have responsibilities. Um, in fact, I'll give you a little a little uh, insight scoop here. I called the book Falling Short because Efren divided it so well that I was kind of nervous that my second book was going to fall short of expectations. And so I actually channeled a lot of that because I'm like, I'm not the only person that feels uh, this kind of fear about, you know, not living up to expectations that other people's expectations. And so that's actually what I kind of channeled for that book. Well, thank you for being honest because writing is so hard. And I think that our students sometimes don't get to hear that, that piece of it. And we do have a phone call question right now. Hi, caller. What is your name and what's your question? Uh, hi, my name's Maximus, and my question is, how do you connect to any of the characters or Ephraim? Ooh, how do you connect to the characters or Ephraim? Great question. So, like with Ephraim, it, it was a book about um, middle school. So I had to go back in my own memories, and I'm 49 years old now, and some of my memories are starting to fade. They don't all stay there. And, uh, but I, the ones that I, the, all the memories that I still have are the ones that are very special to me. So if they're there, they're there for a reason. So those are the ones that I like to kind of like revisit. And I think back to all the people who I liked when I was in middle school and I surround them and, and I kind of take a little bit like, why did I like those people? And then I give those attributes to my characters. So that's why they feel so real because they're all kind of like, you know, based on unreal people to a certain degree. Uh, I mean, I tweak, you know, personalities and kind of combine characters sometimes, but they they feel like they're really real, and I I, I like hanging around with them. Um, that's one of my rules. There's one thought of one philosophy is that you just want to have interesting characters. They don't have to be necessarily likable. I personally feel that they should be likable because if I'm going to spend you know eight hours with somebody, um, it's like going on an airplane. You want somebody who you can talk to and somebody you can get along and really like. Uh, so that's why I, I try to make my characters likable. All right, we have another phone call. Hi, caller. What's your name and what is your question? Uh, hi, my name is Maximus. Um, hi, my name. Hi, what's your question? Um, my name is Elena, and who is um, your favorite character and why? And um, falling short. Oh, who's your favorite character in Falling Short? Oh my goodness. Uh, falling Short has so many great characters. Um, I will say that the, the main character was Isaac, and he was kind of based a little bit on my son uh, because he just has a huge heart. And Marco is actually based a little bit on my nephew, also has a, a lot of heart too. And um, I like him. I think I like all the characters in there. They're just. Um, what I wanted to do with Falling Short was I wanted to highlight like really kindness and really good people. So as a teacher, I noticed that we, we don't do a very good job of uh, giving accolades and praise to people just for being kind. We give it to people who have good grades. We give trophies and, and awards to people who are very athletic and do well in sports. But what about people who are just genuinely really nice? And that's what I wanted to kind of uh, bring attention to a little bit. So I love all the characters in there, except for one character who if you read the book, you guys know who, who <laughs> probably is. But even like Dos Equis, uh, uh, yeah, they're all fantastic. I love every single one of those characters. Um, I don't know if I can choose any. Could you tell us a little bit about Falling Short? Like give us a brief overview if students haven't yet read it. Sure, so um, it's about two best friends who kind of turn to each other. And uh, it. I wanted to kind of, break away from the whole stereotype of the masculine masculinity thing, the toxic toxic masculinity. And so right here on the screen on the left, you have Isaac. And Isaac, is his parents are getting a divorce. His father, unfortunately, is 
is um, an alcoholic. And Isaac's under the impression that if he became more like Marco and he had better grades, that his parents wouldn't fight anymore and maybe they wouldn't divorce. So his grades aren't the best, but he excels in basketball. So he's going to try and become more like Marco. And Marco, unfortunately, there's a scene in the book where uh, his dad's supposed to take him to Disneyland and he doesn't show up. And he oh. just Marco starts thinking his dad just doesn't want to hang out with him because they don't really connect. And he thinks that if he were more like Isaac, more athletic, like his dad used to be when he was in high school, that his dad will want to be with him. So he is super, he has perfect grades. He's a true scholar and he's not very athletic at all. And he's going to try and become like Isaac. And uh, pretty much they're going to almost kind of swap roles. One's going to try and become a scholar. One's going to try and become an athlete in order to, and they're going to support each other throughout the whole time. And there's a lot of really, a lot of humor in this book. Well, it's it got sounds... a little bit of tender moments as well, but it's it's definitely humorous. And it definitely sounds like something that that students would think would work, right? We're just going to totally change our lives real quick. No big deal. <laughs> Well, we're almost out of time, but briefly, what advice do you have for students who are aspiring writers? I would say one, like who you are, love who you are, and two, share who you are. So whatever your personality is like, let it shine through your pages. I want to know what your personality is like because you're all unique. You all see the world through your own unique lens. And that's what I'm interested in, in hearing when I, when I read a book. Um, I want to know who you are. And if you think that you're quirky, make your characters work quirky too. Um, and just write about things you know, your expertise. Uh, people in the, uh, right now who I'm, I'm seeing at the bottom of the screen, how many of you guys are into anime, for example? Anybody? Oh, yeah. OK. Then you can have oh, your characters be into anime too. If you're into sports, make your characters be into sports. You guys are all experts on certain things um, and use those things. I'm a 49 year old uh, teacher, an author who pretends to be young for a living. And you guys are the actual experts. You guys don't have to pretend you are young. You guys can use words that I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> uh, right? You guys know what's going on. So yeah, you guys are more prepared to write books than I am, uh, honestly. And just one little tidbit, I am a horrible writer, but I am relentless when it comes to my edits and it takes me a little longer than most people and that's okay. Um, it's not about how talented you are, it's about how hard you work. Yeah, could you tell us a little bit more about your writing process? Like, do you start with a character? Do you start with a plot? Um, where do you start? Where do your ideas come from? I usually do, make a little bit of like a storyline, a timeline, but a um, storylines. And it's very, um, usually how the, I want, it's very general. It's not very detailed. Um, and the reason I don't go into more detail, I don't plot everything is that once my characters become real, they stop listening to me. They don't do what I want them to do. So I might have an idea of what I want a character to do, but once they start feeling real, it's, they take a life of their own. And then that's the the magic right there. Once a character, so you know who they are, you just, your job is to put them in a situation that's difficult, challenging, so they could be heroic. And um, and they will decide how they're gonna be based on who how you created them. Um, so that that's how I write. I, I, I'm a character-based um, author. Well, thank you so much. That's fantastic advice. I think that so often our students think that it's just magic, right? But no, <laughs> the, the key is hard work coming back to it over and over again and, and just building the story. So um, thank you so much, Key Middle School. You guys did a great job today. You guys did, had some great questions and we really appreciated you taking the time to talk with us. Thanks, Key. And thank you, Ernesto. It was a pleasure chatting with you about your books and your writing process. And I just can't wait to, to see what you write next. I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. I had, I had a fantastic time. All the kids were amazing. They had some amazing questions, too. Yeah, they did, they did a fantastic job. So thank you so much. If you, would, you. if you would like to learn more about Ernesto Cisneros, visit his website. To learn more about our upcoming programs, visit the Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Emily Godfrey. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming. Thanks for watching.